Revolvers got massively expanded upon in Phantom Liberty, jumping from just 9 in the game all the way to 17. Though that doesn't just mean 8 new ones to look at, since pretty much every original gun 2 now functions at least somewhat differently. But don't worry, you can still absolutely live out your western cowboy dreams. So for the second time in my life, let's take a look at all the revolvers in Cyberpunk 2077 before deciding once and for all which is best. On average, because of course there's a lot more nuance to that now. And hopefully by the end, you'll know which revolver is best for you specifically. Quickly though, here's how to get the best out of most revolvers with perks and cyberware. Cool is the fundamental attribute for revolvers and pistols now, with perks unlocking two main abilities. Focus mode prevents stamina from draining when aiming down the sights, and Deadeye improves accuracy and damage when near full stamina, transforming these guns into the ultimate powerhouses for landing headshots. Additionally, the tech tree now buffs all weapons, understandably. Unlocking bolt mode, a more damaging, less cover penetrating shot which you get from firing a tech weapon just before full charge. For cyberware then, there's a lot of choice. The Apogee or Militech Sandevistons can be toggled on just before firing each shot to help achieve more accuracy, but I also found a Chrome Compressor No OS build worked pretty well, especially for the slower firing models. Immovable Force and Shock Absorber both help a fair amount with recoil and accuracy, whilst Shock and Awe offers bonus protection when fighting at more close range. Revolvers are no longer fit for stealth purposes, so for one that will come to, and we can no longer attach silences. Therefore, I'd recommend a more heavy armor, defensive build, since you are going to get shot at, and no matter how good your quick draw skills are, many larger fights will definitively involve some return fire. The DR5 Nova cements itself in 2.0 as probably the most average revolver of the bunch. I know, makes sense sitting at the bottom, but by that I mean it behaves and performs as you'd expect a revolver to, albeit with zero quirks or literally anything to make it stand out. Superior on paper to the basic overture in every way, save for pure damage capabilities. It's straightforward to use in combat and can even hold its own on very hard mode, mostly with the right build, though there are so many more guns on this list alone which perform better and are just more interesting. Including, not least, this gun's two unique iconics, which we'll be getting to. Only thing the Nova does have going for it above those, same as any basic weapon really, is the fact that it's moddable. Sporting just one mod slot, at least on the one I found though, you'll have to choose carefully what buff you want. For me, the most noticeable were Parallax, which increases range, and with the Deadeye perk, the stamina regen debuff doesn't matter. Equally, Critichet is good if you want to just shoot at the floor, though this is very much far from the best ricochet gun, trust me. And of course, pyro is always a safe bet. After all, setting enemies on fire for extra damage over time is just a straight up no-nonsense way to secure more damage, and looks kinda cool at the same time. Bear in mind though, once you assign a mod, unlike with the X Mod 2s, you won't be able to remove or replace it. To acquire the Nova then, just like any basic gun, either re-roll weapon vendors until they sell one, or more often than not, just pick them up as loot. An entirely new model of revolver for Phantom Liberty is the metal from Tektronica. Or Tektronica, I think, possibly? Contextually described as really not that great, but better than nothing. Designed to be cheap, not cheerful, and suited to serve those down in the slums. I found when using this gun that that description was apt, with reduced stats when compared to both the Nova and Overture, though beating them both in pure damage. It comes again with a singular mod slot, to which I would heavily recommend attaching Pyro. Rounds from this gun are already explosive, so why not make them explosive fire rounds? Also, that explosive fact appears to mean that the gun won't ricochet, making Critichet a mod to absolutely avoid. I also found Parallax fairly pointless with this one, since this really isn't a long-range revolver like, say, the Overture. Acting more as a mini shotgun of sorts, packing a decent punch, and one-shot headshotting weaker enemies. In fact, this one pairs pretty decently with the Apogee Sandeviston, provided you're just toggling the Sandy on and off specifically for when you take shots. Don't wait for a second one in sandy time because it's going to take forever. This gun has a pretty low fire rate. Though bear in mind there are two unique variants of this coming up, both of which are straight up better. 
Comrades Hammer, what have they done to you? Taking a king, a god, amongst weapons and bringing it down to be just like everyone else, worse even, a faint shadow of its former self, a slow, situational, really not too strong projectile anymore in the grand scheme of things. Listen, let's just remove the comparison to old Comrades Hammer for a second and look at this one for what it is. A souped up Buria with the strength of three rounds condensed into a singular, more powerful one. Which, yes, you can do a hell of a lot of damage with when fully hitting a target. And Hell is one of the few examples of explosive rounds actually being noticeable and inflicting splash damage if fired into groups. Though bear in mind that might also be partly down to the chain lightning bolt perk for tech weapons. This gun, however, is extremely clunky to handle. I don't pretend to be above average in accuracy as a player, though I certainly found this harder to land hits with than plenty of the others. The problem with that being a miss with this gun precipitates a need to reload every single time. To be fair, there's actually a cool workaround for this at least, as we can instead use quick melee hits for an instant reload, encouraging you to literally get right up close and fire this devastatingly explosive thing at point blank range. This is a kind of viable way to use the hammer now, and cyberware like Proxy Shield will protect you more at these ranges. But it doesn't really work amongst bigger groups. The surrounding gunfire just doesn't let you live long enough out in the open, even with the most offensive, protective side cyberware money can buy. Ranged attacks work okay, and hell, this isn't a bad choice to use against bosses. I took out Wesley Snipes in like three hits, and normally he's quite a difficult fight. The problem is, and I need to go back to comparing it now to the old one, this gun used to fire a literal unstoppable force of ridiculous power that could go through anything and anyone. And going through cover is still the signature ability of most tech weapons, though specifically not this one anymore. It was infuriating and sad to see all these foes hiding behind cover and there being literally nothing I could do, knowing that what I held would have gone through whatever the cyberpunk stand-in for Vibranium is to destroy them back in 1.6. Whereas now, it's just mediocre. The slowness and limitations make it less worthwhile picking compared to other revolvers, and situations where it is still the best thing to have are very few and far between. The two main ones of those though, being shooting it into big groups when they're out in the open, or dashing around in 1v1s, repeatedly meleeing, then firing this thing. Again, the actual shot is still by no means atrocious, just not the unstoppable god it once was. And firing into cover is a real pain in the ass now. Only thing that hasn't changed is how to get it. As always, the crafting spec can be looted from the body of Darius Miles from the suspected crime activity in Arroyo. At least now, crafting is no longer tied to the tech tree, so it can just be straight up built at any time. Suffering from the same major debuff as the Comrade's Hammer now of not penetrating cover, the Leica at least does come with a special ability to somewhat make up for that. As part of the Tektronika weapon series that we can loot from airdrops, this one has a high chance to set enemies on fire. In this special flame, which ensures crit damage on anyone who has it. This stacks with how many enemies are burning at once, increasing crit damage across the board as it does, but also weapon inaccuracy. And that second part, yeah, that was something of a problem for me using this. Much like the Comrade Hammer, Leica feels hella clunky to use, and despite having two shots instead of one, each does still have to count, especially in more intense fights. The charge time, coupled with the none too accurate scope, just make for a difficult to use gun in my opinion. Whilst the damage is good when you do land those hits, it's not really enough by itself in my opinion to justify the lower rate of fire. Decent-ish against tougher enemies, but the lack of a melee to insta reload and the fact Comrade's Hammer does high damage per shot probably make it a win in that department out of the two. Where Leica beats it then is in how it pairs with the other two guns of this series, as well as the Volkadav machete. Slotting all of these into a build together will create this compounding critical fire effect, where you can switch between each depending on the range and situation. Leica may be one of the hardest to use, but its burn chance is significantly better than most of the others. Therefore, landing a hit with this first, then switching to the alibi, Volkadav or even Tegan for more accurate after this is an effective strategy. Whilst the lingering burn effect itself isn't much to talk about, compoundingly increased critical damage is pretty damn effective, especially in larger fights. Just probably don't take Leica to be your primary weapon. There are far better choices out there for that.
You know what turns out to be a really decent choice in update 2.0? Amidst a plethora of specialized overtures to choose from, the bog standard one actually holds up very well. With increased damage over the DR5 Nova and lower stats everywhere else on paper, for some reason I find this one a lot more easy and satisfying to use. Maybe it's just the classic cowboy magnum feel, but that still absolutely counts for something. Performing well at close to mid range and one I found particularly easy to land headshots with, and perhaps that's down to the nice straightforward iron sights. Best thing about the overture though, which helps it to keep up with its superior iconics, is the singular mod slots which you have a number of decent options for. Pyro again is run of the mill but effective, and whilst Critiche is a decent choice, aiming properly with this gun specifically is none too tough. As a standalone weapon, I'd say it pairs best with Parallax provided you have the Deadeye perk, simply compounding that range and accuracy when aiming even more. Equally, for those sporting Amnesty, which works best straight after drawing, then this is a good secondary to switch to in order to keep cycling that effect. And by applying a Zenith mod to this overture, the swapping will take place faster and give this gun a bonus crit chance and reduced weapon spread. A more than worthy alternative to the Iconics, though those can often be a little more powerful or stylized. Just a slightly improved variant of the regular Overture next, Roscoe is acquired only provided you take out Dodger in the Waiting for Dodger gig. And whilst it should rightfully be one of the most powerful revolvers for those skilled enough to wield it, its special ability just straight up seems to not work. Apparently, shooting an enemy first in the leg, then in the head, should neutralize them on the spot. And I don't know about you, but neutralize to me sounds like a more sensitive way to say kill. Supposed to be a very stylistic takedown, and yeah, it would be. Then any headshots to enemies on the ground will be guaranteed crits. That part does work, I believe. Whilst the leg headshot thing, rather than killing enemies as it should, will sometimes instead knock them down. But again, this isn't a 100% guarantee and may more just be an effect of the overture in general than specifically the Roscoe. Rather than shooting an enemy in the leg than the head though, you might as well save yourself some time re-aiming by landing multiple headshots to begin with. Bear in mind, headshot bonuses are actually lower on this than the regular overture, but there is a bonus 50% crit damage, giving this one just a small edge to anybody specced into higher crit chance. Other than that, the stats are pretty much identical. Roscoe does do a little more base damage, giving it a slight edge, but really compared to the other variants is in reality not that special, which is a real shame given the creative tactic that this pertains to rewards. And in a game where we now have the likes of the Neil mod, which in a well specced build allows shotgun hits to just the leg to to instantly kill, Roscoe wouldn't even be too overpowered. I don't know, either I'm reading this wrong or the mechanic is genuinely broken. I did try extensively to figure out if I was missing anything, maybe it's only a certain half of the leg, I don't know, but it does seem on forums like others are having the same problem as me. Hopefully it gets fixed, and if it does, no doubt Roscoe would bump up a few spots. Our first of two metal variants now, Tegan compromises a little on base damage in return for a slightly faster attack speed. Otherwise it feels very similar to the basic metal, albeit with the same crit damage burn effect as the Leica. Yes, Tegan is another revolver that is part of the Tektronika weapon set, and again, pairs pretty nicely into a build utilizing just these four weapons. In fact, as far as revolvers go, and the fact that this one has eight rounds instead of two, it's possibly worth slotting in favor of the Leica. Yes, the rounds are only half as damaging, and the metal ain't exactly a dawdle when it comes to handling either, but I found this one a little more user friendly and a lot more forgiving than that clunky as hell Comrade Hammer knockoff for a lot of situations. Another good place for all this series of weapons in fact is actually in a Netrunner build, specifically one making heavy utilization of Contagion, maybe something running the Raven Microcyber, as that's best for spreading quick hacks. See applying burn to any enemies affected by Contagion now will cause them to explode, compounding again the damaging effects of the Tektronika series as your enemies explode in a cloud of green smoke. Though then again, the same effect could be achieved by slapping a pyro mod on literally any basic gun. Fire damage is not that hard to come by anymore, and perhaps the handling of an overture would be more to your taste. Anyway, you can grab the Tegan, same as the Leica, via the airdrops in Dogtown. I don't think there's a specific method to triggering its spawn, just head to every red smoke plume you see I guess, until it shows up. 
It makes sense that out of all the Overture variants, this one wouldn't rank as high, discounting Roscoe being broken of course. After all, a downtrodden Night City Cops gear shouldn't be able to compete with a literal cowboy, Militech, a mob boss, or indeed one of the most famous rocker boys in the world. Crash is of course gifted to us by River at the end of his questline, and the whole thing with this one is that it fires automatically if you hold it down for a while. Kind of the same as it did before, but a little bit different. No longer is it an automatic, but only slightly slower version of Amnesty, rather this auto fire is now particularly slow, favouring instead accurate shots by reducing recoil and spread. It's pretty user friendly as it goes actually, and you can still get by dashing all over the place to avoid damage. Headshots are noticeably very powerful with a 200% multiplier, and again a bit easier to land with this. Crash really isn't a bad gun, it's just that comparing it with all the rest of the abilities, this kind of serves as more trusty and reliable, but far less adventurous. The the Archangel variant, which we'll come to in fact, can, aside from all the accuracy buffs, now achieve all the same effects as this one and more. If you also find yourself experiencing the 1.6 Comrades Hammer Blues, then look no further than the bulk standard RT46 Brodia. Now this actually is the closest thing to old Comrades Hammer that we can get in the game. Less damage than the new Hammer and Leica, sure, but to the benefit of better handling and range, 4 rounds in the barrel, and most importantly, that little thing most tech weapons are known for called shooting through cover. Yes, this is the only variant of the gun which doesn't get constantly snagged up on the surrounding environments, doing with great efficiency exactly what it was designed to do, landing headshots no matter the obstacle for more often than not an insta-kill. Sure, it may not have the insane 5, even 6 figure numbers the old hammer would stack up, but it really doesn't need to, provided it's doing its job of, you know, taking out the enemies. Honestly, it wasn't until coming to use this that I realised how much of a drawback the other two were suffering from. There are very few tech handguns in the game now, and I I think this might be the only one to pack a single powerful shot, making it, by default, a standout revolver for me with this rare ability. What's more, we can of course install mods. One model I found had just one slot, but another had two. I'd recommend the Wall Puncher Chimera mod to make this thing even more powerful, though see-through is a lesser but still decent alternative if you're wanting to use the core for something else. A quick spoiler warning for the Firestarter quest of Phantom Liberty, so jump to the next timestamp if you haven't played that one yet. Bald Eagle is Kurt Hansen's edition of the new Metal Revolver, and can be acquired after defeating him in the boss battle, an event which only unlocks if you side with Reed during this big decision moment. It's mental, in fact, just how many unique items you get through this ending path as opposed to the other one. Don't get me wrong, I love them both, but this one just has way too much good stuff to not do for your main playthrough. If you ask me, Bald Eagle is far superior to the basic metal, even if we put a good mod on that. With a crazy 250% headshot damage bonus, 75% armour penetration and explosive rounds. Though again, that last one really isn't as exciting as it sounds. It definitely holds its own as a singular unit, boasting better stats all round than its base counterparts, though same as that one does start to show cracks around the edges, feeling sluggish, shall we say, especially when aiming and drawing it. Reload speed, mind you, feels okay. The standout feature of this gun then is its ability to work in tandem with the Fang Knife, also formerly Colonel Hansen's, and allowing us to recreate for ourselves his signature move. Throwing this thing into somebody's leg, then immediately switching to Bald Eagle and shooting it will shatter said limb and instantly return Fang. It takes a little practice, but nailing down this technique, it actually works really well, though equally lower level enemies will go down just as easily by shooting them in the head. Of course, using this Eagle Fang technique technique on the regular probably means you ought to spec into some knife perks as well. Shouldn't be a problem, since you'll already have plenty of cool points for the revolvers themselves anyway. Of course, there's sleek guns out there which feel of higher quality on their own, but none with a synergizing target pin ability quite like this. In fact, there's several instances in 2.0 where you're encouraged and rewarded for comboing totally different weapons like this, and I love that.
All Reliable makes the bold claim that Cassidy would ditch Amnesty in place of this gun. Now, that's an argument that could be made, it certainly wins out in some departments, but what the two guns essentially boil down to is a difference in range. Amnesty excels hip firing up close with multiple speedy shots, whilst All Reliable favours the cowboy who shoots from the top of the saloon at range. Indeed, sporting an irremovable scope to help with this. Though honestly, I found it more of a hindrance. Like I said earlier, Overture's iron sights are one of the best in the game, and I actually feel like I miss more with the scope since I can't distinguish the background as easily. Nevertheless, this thing still performs excellently, often pulling off one-shot headshots even as we get into the longer range, with the further away ones having a higher crit chance that synergizes with the crit damage buff. Though there does come a point where this seems to drop off at very long distances, probably the best long range revolver in the game, so if that's your style, then it's worth considering. In fact, despite suggesting you should ditch Amnesty for it, I found a better solution was just to use both, switching to close range hip fire whenever necessary, then all reliable to take out anyone at greater distance. Probably a better pairing overall than the simple Zenith modded overture that I suggested earlier. Though acquiring this one involves a tough moral decision. Brief spoiler warning for the side quest shot by both sides, so jump to the next timestamp if you haven't played it yet. You see, this gun was formerly owned by Militech agent Dante, who confronts you and Bree down in the Sinusher facility. In terms of the morals of this mission, David, sorry, uh, Dante, is definitely the one in the right here, but more on that in another video. However, we will of course have to kill him in order to loot his gun. Bearing in mind, Bree too is sporting her own unique pistol, though you don't have to kill her to get that one. Equally, you can just kill them both for shits and gigs and just be a terrible person. Either way though, Dante will have to die here to get all reliable, unless maybe it sells in the black market afterwards, which I don't believe it does. I haven't seen it there at any rate. So whilst it may have one of the most clear use cases of the revolvers, that being a long range magnuming, it is also one of the most story costly to get. Quasar is what a tech weapon should be and more. Despite just being a standard non-iconic gun, this thing really has a hell of a lot going for it. Sure, on paper it might not sound tremendously amazing at any one thing, but all its various buffs and abilities in tandem make for a very powerful gun. 150% headshot damage is very nice, though you won't be landing as many headshots with this one as most. But the armor penetration, not to mention the decent range, are things you don't necessarily notice, but they do passively make combat a lot easier. Of course, not only does the Quasar penetrate cover, which is the whole draw of tech weapons, but it also fires automatically once charged. Now, I must admit, the level of recoil this generates does make it less accurate than most, not enough to make it bad, and I think the cover penetration makes up for this, but do be prepared to miss more often than, say, with other guns. Another thing I like about this one, though, is just how much you can afford to hide behind cover in a fight. Not only can you just shoot through whatever you're behind if needs must, but you can also hit foes for good damage, anywhere within a sort of mid-range distance. But what really makes the Quasar well above average for me is the ability to slot not one, but two additional mods, placing it on par with an X-Mod 2 weapon, which I've done a dedicated video for and you can check out for a ton more info on weapon mods in general. Two I found to be great on the Quasar were firstly Spine Tickler, which at tier 5 grants a 50% chance for fully charged shots to also generate an EMP blast. This is obviously particularly effective with this gun due to its automatic nature, and basically grants it the same ability as the Yinglong, one of the best SMGs. The other one I found to be great was again the Wall Puncher Chimera mod, though it comes at the sacrifice of the other three you could craft. It'll charge the weapon to 200% whilst taking no extra time, meaning it utterly ignores armor now, and receives no damage penalty for shooting through cover. Slot this onto the Quasar, and combat basically feels like an open plane everywhere. It's nothing close to the old Comrade Hammer, but it's a hell of a lot closer than the new one. And in fact, this gun made the Ross Alma fight super easy on very hard, whilst previously I'd been continuously struggling to win it with the Leica. Just be careful again with this one of the aggressive level of recoil. As a replica of the gun used by an infamous Cuban assassin, the Mancinella is now the only revolver in the game viable for a stealth build. For anyone wanting a return to the silenced one-shot overture build, this is as close as you're going to get now. Though bear in mind there are plenty of pistols too, which can viably make for a build much similar. The gun itself doesn't seem to sport a silencer, and don't ask me how the effect actually works, but somehow, when you enter combat, the increased damage and lack of detection stealth bonuses remain in place briefly, for about three seconds. 
seconds. Provided the enemy you are shooting dies in that time, stealth will remain active, allowing for the systematic Hitman style of play. The gun also sports slightly better handling than the regular Nova and much improved range, which is very useful for these scenarios. Ricochet shots are disabled, however, in place of rounds which inflict poison. A useful buff in open combat, but none too needed in stealth. If you want, you can pair it with the Black Mamba Circulatory Cyberware though, which trades 90% of poison damage for a bonus 18% damage across the board, allowing for quicker stealth kills. I tried it out in open combat too though of course, and there it didn't shine nearly as brightly. Suffering from all the same mediocrities as the regular Nova, kick that makes it hard to be accurate, and a damage level that can't compete with the Overture. Not that this is a problem, there's plenty of alternatives on the list that we can switch out to at this point, but none that can also dominate the shadows like the Mancinella can. A true assassin revolver and remnants of a bygone age. Only other downside is you won't pick it up until pretty late on in the expansion, given to us by Mr. Hands at the start of the Run This Town side quest, prior to which there's a number of stealth missions to first get through, for which you'll just have to make do I suppose with a standard silenced pistol. Only iconic variant to the Quasar next, Gris Gris can be acquired from Slider's personal storage room during the main quest The Damned. However, in order to get inside, you'll have to first play through the gig Treating Symptoms, which also involves facing down the Voodoo Boys in a different base. Once you see this large sort of lion server statue, head through the door to the left and pick up the key. Later, at Slider's base of operations, come to this door here, which will automatically open now, inside which will be Gris Gris, named after an amulet that is said to bring luck to the bearer or misfortune to others. Aptly fitting, considering this weapon's special ability, for each hit to have a small chance to also upload a quick hack to the foe, the strongest ones being very rare indeed. Sure, you may not be able to attach the wall puncher or spine tickler mods, the latter of which is essentially just short circuits, but I'd definitely say this random ability is probably the more interesting one to use. A little bit like the Wabberjack, albeit more reliable. You never fully know what you're gonna get, though it certainly makes for some pretty colourful combat. Combat. In fact, functionally, it's almost identical to the Hakatomi Chimera Smart Gun mod, which also uploads hacks only in accordance with body parts, not just random luck. And I think an interesting build with this one could say be a tech netrunner who's constantly uploading hacks both from their tech and their guns. Alas, the modded regular Quasar is able to trump this in terms of raw damage, and this one sits above it mostly due to the roleplay and fun factors. Out of all the guns that were also in 1.6, Doom Doom is the one that feels like it's changed the least, in terms of what it literally does. Firing three rounds per shot now, instead of four, granted, but still, the idea is to inflict devastating and wide, albeit less accurate and far-reaching swaths of damage every time you pull the trigger. It very much feels with this one like you ought to plow your way through hordes of enemies, systematically annihilating each one up close, inflicting more gore as you do so. Though honestly, for the amount of gore the description of this one sets you up for, there are far more annihilating weapons found across the game. For instance, the entire school of shotguns and LMGs, as well as the cutomatic chainsaws. That said, what Doom Doom does give you, in hefty amounts, is satisfying collages of red and white numbers, thanks to each of the three projectiles and their bonus critical damage. Though we can also thank the cockatrice eyes and visual cortex support cyberwares in this case for the red numbers. As always though, Doom Doom is only acquirable under a few hefty base conditions. During the pickup, at the start of the game, you must stay on good terms with Maelstrom, and this either means ratting out Militech or paying for the flathead yourself. This will, however, lock you out of one of the funniest weapons to use in the game, Sir John Falastiff, a vibrator so effective it can literally cause death, a power I've only otherwise seen in the House of Hope quest in Baldur's Gate 3. Also, it can lock you out of the Chaos Pistol unless you wait for Royce to die once he suits up into this laser mech thing. Otherwise, just make sure that Dum Dum lives through this quest. A character who gets majorly expanded upon in the No Coincidence book, by the way, which is totally worth a read, link in the description. But anyway, if Dum Dum lives, he'll show up later at Totem Tans during Second Conflict, at which point you must aggro on him, after which you can loot his revolver. Overall, it does about double the damage of a regular Nova, but forces you into a more close range playstyle. If I were you, and had enough perk points, I'd definitely pair it with a more shotgun based build. It it leans right in with that tanky annihilation style of play. Very chaotic, very powerful, but leaving tactics and planning at the door. 
Amnesty was, back in 1.6, my number two revolver. Funny how things circle around. At that point, I couldn't praise it enough for just how well it captured the essence of a Clint Eastwood quick-draw western cowboy. And whilst its stats have been somewhat reshuffled now, it still, very much, successfully captures that vibe. Still running with the whole quick-firing thing, this one shoots twice as fast as a regular Overture. Definitely a little slower than before, but still great for spamming left click. In fact, out of all the revolvers to pair alongside a Sandeviston, I'd say this is one of the best, since you barely notice any time slow penalties when shooting, as opposed to others where you totally do. Written in yellow, then, is Amnesty's special ability. Hip firing a headshot immediately after drawing will always be a guaranteed crit, stacking with a 200% bonus to headshot damage and 50% crit damage anyway. Pretty specific this, and you'd better get used to holstering and redrawing throughout combat to make the most of that bonus, or else use the zenith or all reliable methods that I discussed earlier. Clearly, you can see exactly what they're going for. The classic quick draw stance from any western ever. Of course, anyone with the nerves of tungsten steel perk is going to get guaranteed crits with headshots anyway, provided you're above 85% stamina. Making Amnesty's ability not void, still useful at below 85% stamina, but still less relevant. The biggest drawback to this gun now then, which to be fair, just further informs the playstyle it's designed for, is range. At less than half that of the regular Overture, this thing is not designed for anything past mid-range combat tops, and closer mid-range come to that. Feeling very similar in fact to how I used the Fazard X Mod 2 shotgun, albeit with a western twist. Not all that suitable for weaker builds in larger fights, unless your dash skills and Sandeviston timing are impeccable. But when speedily dispatching smaller groups, it's still a very fun, viable way to do that. This Overture variant will always hold a special place for me, and is a late game must at least try for any gunslinger builds. As before though, it actually can't be acquired until the Alder Caldo ending, when you shoot enough bottles for Cassidy Writer's Contest. It'll then be yours throughout the rest of that ending, but will also be rewarded to you when returning to the point of no return. Which, actually, hold on. The winner then, and I just want to say, when I tested all of these outs, I never got a definitive inkling that one outshone the rest perfectly. And when carefully considering the order afterwards, this is what on average came out on top for me in 2.0. Again, doesn't mean it dominates in all situations, but perhaps rather that if I had to choose one revolver to carry me through everything, every possible form of combat in the game, I think this one would score the most points across the board without specifically winning in any one sector. Arcane is of course the Overture variant gifted to us by Kerry Uridine after we play the music gig with him. In 1.6, its whole thing was that it applied shock damage, and in 2.0, that is still very much a feature, with 20% chance to apply shock outside combat, though this seemed for me to scale to 100% when entering it, for a lot of extra lingering blue damage effects. Incredibly useful, since many of the shots seem to be taking enemies down to about 5% health, with shock then finishing them off. But this isn't all, not anymore. Archangel also offers a higher than most 220% headshot damage multiplier, which, I mean, yeah, see for yourself, it's mental, and it can also fire in fully automatic mode now, though bear in mind not groundbreakingly quickly, and not nearly as fast as Amnesty can. And if in focus mode 2, with the deep breath perk, it's gonna feel really slow. Apparently, this is to the rhythm of the song Archangel, which, yeah, awesome idea, though kinda tough to pick up on when the literal only sounds are gunshots. <laughs> What this automatic fire does do though, which is another hella useful feature, is knock down enemies on successive hits, and reliably too, unlike Roscoe. Seriously, these Overture variants all very much feel like mini shotguns in their own unique ways, and given that they can't be silenced anymore, that's not actually a bad combo of weapons for a gunner tank build. This one also handles a little noticeably better than most, so totally viable in more ranged combats, though beaten by all reliable if we were assessing it on range alone. If this one is, its own king of anything, its damage over time, thanks to its shocking ability. And it also makes it a good contender in electrical damage themed builds. But overall, if you're playing an average, everyman kind of build without that much nuance, Archangel is certainly a very excellent choice. Though, to be fair, so is at least the upper half of this list. So, you know, preference, fun, etc. Of course, this is all my opinion. I'm sure yours differs at least a little bit, and that's good, because I'd love to hear down below which revolvers are 
your favourite to use. And what else can you combo them with for a supremely powerful gunslinger build? I'm going to try to make videos like this for every class of weaponry, same as I did before, as well as vehicles, gigs, endings, etc. Just bear in mind, they take a hefty amount of research, work, and most importantly, time to make. More so than most. So they may take a while. Huge thanks, as always, to the patrons for supporting me to keep doing this. And if you also want your name here, then do check that out in the description. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this one useful. I'm Sam Brown, and I'll see you soon in another video.